Marty. You know, it's kind of frightening when we recognize these distinguished members of the profession. Marty Morris and I were interns together way back in blum, blum, blum. <laughs> Internships at Friend Osteopathic Hospital have not been the same since. Congratulations again, Martin, my very good friend, and Jeff Hetherington, who has me to visit out there in Oregon so often, and there has not been a better champion of the osteopathic profession than Jeff Hetherington. He got that from his father, by the way. Congratulations to you for being the recipients of these well-deserved honors. And of course, my very good friend, Cheryl, congratulations to you. I know these people. I work with these people because we are a family. But pride? I have never been more proud than when my granddaughter, who is a third-year osteopathic medical student at one of our newer schools, Virginia College of Osteopathic Medicine, she called me up and she says, Big Daddy, I've heard about the devastation in the Gulf Coast. I want to go down there. I said, I would be surprised if you did not want to go down there because I know it's in your blood because I put it there. She and 19 of her classmates, they got in touch with Dixie Tuke Rollins, the dean, and they got in touch with Jim Wolfe, the president of Virginia College of Osteopathic Medicine. And they, all of them, with faculty and staff, went down to the Gulf Shore. And they didn't wait for special permission, and they didn't wait to be given directions, and they didn't wait to get special license. They went down there and started treating patients that needed to be treated. And they were giving insulin shots. And they were treating those with hypertension. And they were giving osteopathic manual medicine treatment to the workers and to the victims, and to the policemen, and the workers. And I said, I'm so proud of that daughter. And then there were a group of students that came from the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. They were led by Mark Hahn. Mark Hahn. And he did, he set up a, a, a clinic in a makeshift building where he could attend to the people that were in greatest need which is consistent with the history and the tradition of osteopathic medicine. Now, people, there are some of those students that went down to the Gulf Coast, that went into the eye of the storm, and they are here today, and I want you to see them. Can I have the house lights? The students, stand up. The students that went down to the Gulf Shore, stand up. I want to see the students. The students that went to the Gulf Shore, stand up. Don't be ashamed. Be proud of it. The students that went to the Gulf Shore. Thank you. I was never more proud, I was never more proud of our students. We do not need fear for the future of osteopathic medicine because they are our future. That's an old cliche, but they are our future and a future that we can be very well proud of. You know, when I entered this profession, there were those who questioned my sanity. They said, don't you know you're black? I said, well, yeah, I, pretty, I had a pretty good idea. You know, I looked at it. But, 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 but you're also a minority. Well, I kind of figured that there were not a whole lot of us, too. Why would you want to be a minority in a minority profession? I say, you know, there's something to be said when you accomplish something that they said could not be done. It's something to be said. You can't do it. And you go right on and do it. You stick it in the face. You know that? Nah, 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 nah. I did it anyway. Yes, I'm a minority in a minority profession, but there is a great future in this profession. When I entered the profession, do you know that the military would not recognize us as physicians? But then, when we did come recognized as the physicians qualified to be in the military, we did not just stay in the lower ranks. No, 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 no. We went all the way to the top I'm talking about from an osteopathic physician that could not even get in the military at any rank as a medical officer, rose to the top as commanding officer of all of the physicians in the entire military. Ron Blank. I wish Ron Blank was here so he could stand up and let us see him. Where's Ron? Where's Ron? Ron here? He is only one, one of the many flag star ranked medical officers that are osteopathic physicians. Joyce Johnson of the Coast Guard, Sue Bailey of the Department of Defense. These are osteopathic physicians 
that have overcome the odds. These are osteopathic physicians that when they said it can't be done, they went right on and did it anyway. Mr. President, we have reason to be proud. Reason to be proud. I'm so happy to be a part of this, but you know, it has been 53 years, two months, one week, and 20 hours since I set foot into the osteopathic world. I could not see then what I see now because my vision was somewhat clouded, Marty, and you, and you asked me two months ago, what are you going to talk about? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I said, there may be a series of events that occur between now and then that will perhaps make me change my mind about what I'm going to say. So I'm not going to make a commitment to you now. But what I saw then, I, 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 don't, I don't see now. As uh, Yoga Berra would say, the future ain't what it used to be. What I perceived at, as the future of osteopathic medicine 53 years ago, when we had six schools and lost one of them, we had about 15,000 uh, DOs. We were licensed in only about 26 states. We couldn't get commissions in the military. That is what I saw then. I could not project out into the future as to what this profession would become. It sort of reminded me of a trip to New York. My wife said, we are going to New York for my family reunion. I said, wait a minute. You say, we are going to your family reunion? She said, yes, we are going to my family reunion. Well, I don't know any of those people. I don't want to know any of those people. I don't have anything in common with those people. But I had been married long enough to know that when my wife says, we are going to, just do it. You know, just do it. Because I had learned that if your wife says, you are not going to be happy with, Believe it, she'll make sure you're not happy with. So, so, so when she said, we are going to my family reunion, I just went, reluctantly, but I went. Well, when I got there, I said, oh, well, I guess I may as well make the most of it. So I said, I'll take one of these tours. I'm going to Greenwich Village. I hadn't been to Greenwich Village. I wanted to go to Greenwich Village. Heard so much about it. And we were going down in the middle of the afternoon, and the tour guide said, when you get to Greenwich Village, I want to warn you, you will see some of the strangest people you have ever seen. I said, yeah, you New York people, you lie a lot because we went down through Greenwich Village and the streets were bare. He said, no, mister, you don't understand. You got to go down there in the middle of the night. So I went back, 2 o'clock in the morning, and he was right. The streets were jammed with people and there were the strangest looking people I had ever seen. I mean, there were women there with, with, with holes punching the ears and the nose and the eyebrows and the lip and the tongue and, 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 and <laughs> you know what I mean. And every place that they didn't punch holes, they painted themselves. They had tattoos all over the body. And that was the boys. They had tattoos all over their body. I said, holy Christ. He was right. And scared the hell out of me because I said, that's our future. That's our future. But then I thought, I could not see far enough into the future because one day, they will take off those micro minis and halter tops they would take out some of the rings, not all of them, they would take out some of the rings and they would blanch out some of the tattoos. And the, and the girls would put on neat skirts and blouses and the, and the boys would put on a blue serge suit and a white shirt and a striped tie and they would take their rightful place in society as our leaders. Today I can see the future of the osteopathic medicine that I could not see 53 years ago, could not see. I could not see that one day we would not be 15,000, we would be 60,000. I could not see that one day we wouldn't be five schools, but we'd be 22 schools approaching 25 schools. I could not see that we would be not just limited to 26 states where we can practice osteopathic medicine, but we can practice osteopathic medicine in all 50 states and many foreign states. I could not see that far. My vision would not permit me to see that far, but now it's here. It's here, and you have made it possible. And I'm so proud to be a part of this profession.